We'll start by creating a new project. First thing we want to do is to make sure that our import settings are matching the frame rate that we've created in our Maya project. So we're rendering inside of Maya by default at 24 frames a second. So when we import these frames, we're going to tell it that it's 24 frames per second. So we've done that. And now we go up to File, Import, and we need to import all our footage. So here I am inside my Images folder where all my files are, and I need to bring in each sequence. So I'll select the first frame in the sequence and import them in, and then I have my sequence. If I double click on it, I can then preview to see what's going on inside that sequence. I'll, I'll do that for the rest of the files that I need. Okay, so what I've done is I've imported all my sequences. I've also clicked on here to create new uh, folders so I can manage and organize stuff uh, a little better. So I've created a folder with uh, the turntable renders, and I've also got a folder with the beauty or just the, the final look of the uh, other cameras. And in addition to that, oh, I've got a doubling there, so I'll just uh, delete that. So I've got my three cameras, and I've also got my three cameras with my wireframe as well. So the next step is um, I'm going to create a new composition, and this is going to be a sort of a master composition. So I'll go new composition, and making sure it's 1920 by 1080 and the frame rate needs to be 24 frames a second, and the duration is going to be uh, one minute. So I'll just zero, zero, and put one inside there, and go OK. So this is my main comp, so I'm going to rename it um, main comp. Now, there's a couple of ways you could do this, and the let's just uh, do the most simplest way uh, to start with. So let's set up our different cameras. So I'll grab my, say, first camera. I'll drop it into my timeline down the bottom here, like so. I'll grab my second camera, drop that in, and the third camera and drop that in. So then it's a matter of just sliding by clicking and dragging these out to uh, different times. So there we go. And we can, if we press play, we can see a preview of that rendering out. Now the green indicates that it's caching it. Okay, so there's, there's my sequence. And if I play that again, now that it's cached, I get a smoother playback. And you can see I've added extra frames in here that I really don't need. So I'm going to trim this section down to say something like that, and then move my other animations like so. Might even change the order so that I've got a bit more of a, a build up. Just lining these up like so. I can bring that out by clicking and dragging just the end, it's just going to trim. That footage. So there's my animated camera sequence, and if I want to bring down my turntables after that, I can uh, do that as well. But what we want to do is uh, show a breakdown of this sequence. So there's a couple of ways we could do this. Um, one way would be uh, we could just duplicate this this sequence. So Duplicate and then move each of the frames across to the end. And then what we'd need to do is just line up, line up uh, AO and so forth on top of that. So we'll start with uh, the the bottom one here, which is camera four. So I'll go to camera four in my AO. I'll drag that and I'll put it on top of my other sequence. And I'll do that. The same with camera three, there it is, like so, 
and just line it up. It clips in, which is nice. And finally, uh, camera four, no, two, this is the top one. And I'm just going to drag it and drop it onto the top so we can see it and bring it in like so. So I've got my normal camera movements and then I've got my AO, but um, let's transition from one to the other. So an easy way to do that is to, so press T on the keyboard, we'll bring up opacity attribute. So we'll go 100%, um, maybe down the bottom here. We'll create a keyframe by clicking on the little clock. And then at the start, we might say it's zero. So it's going to sort of transition showing the wireframe over the, over the top. Um, you may even want to change the blend mode so that if you click on the toggle switch of modes down the bottom here, you can change the mode to say be uh, multiply. So then you get your wireframe over the top of your scene. Um, may want to even, that might work well, but I think in this case you'd have to turn down the opacity of uh, the color as well so you can just see it coming through. So if we create another keyframe and have it at 100, so now we're going to do sort of a transition from one to the other to show off the AO and wireframe. An easy way of applying the same transition across is actually to select the keyframes. So I'll copy those two keyframes, grab the, the one I want, and making sure I'm starting with the timeline at the start. And I'll just go into T for transparency and paste, and there they are. So I need to do that for this guy as well. So I'll copy those, copy, come up here and paste. And again, for the top one, transparency. Um, and not forgetting to change the mode from uh, normal to multiply for those top AO layers. If we play back that now that it is cached, we can see our normal camera beauty passes, the final sort of look and feel of what it looks like. And then we can see the, uh, the breakdown. So we may even want to add a little bit of space in between those two. Just make sure I've got them all selected. Oops. And just to make this easier for myself, I'm just going to move them all down to the bottom, like so. And with them all selected, I can just move them in the timeline, like so. And I could put some title sequence in here. Like if I bring up the text tool, And to just edit the text, I can edit the text over here. Could come in and show uh, a grid so that you can line things up. And to trim that text, you can bring in the start as well as the end. And you might want to even fade it in and fade it out by T for opacity. We'll put in a keyframe at 100, a little bit in. We'll start at zero. And we'll do the same at the end. So we'll create another keyframe at 100 by clicking this little icon, add. And then another keyframe at zero by just changing the value. So it's just going to go down like so.
and then we can take that, duplicate it, and we might bring it down to the end here. And this time, turntables, um, and so on. You can even give yourself a title and a credits at the end using the same sort of technique. Um, if you want to do a fade to black or uh, something like that as well, you can also add in a solid by right clicking in the area, add solid, and you can pick a particular color. I'm just going to use uh, black. And again, the same process. So I've just brought the solid down underneath and I've just grabbed those keyframes, copy them, go to the black and press, uh, paste them in as well. So it's going to fade in as well. So maybe the uh, fade is going to be a bit beforehand. And we can even move the keyframes over as well. So it's going from this. So I'm just going to take my three top layers, put them underneath. There we go, fading into black. And we could do the same thing for the credits. So yeah, the next step would be just to bring in the uh, turntables as well. Same same process. Um, Oh, we have to bring that in a bit earlier. Now, with the uh, turntable, um, if I bring it in multiple times, it should line up. So I can make it turn over and over again. And I can also do transitions from one to another, just as as we did before. So keyframe a little bit in, and then take it to zero, which will create an additional keyframe, and then it can fade from one to another. So you get the idea. Um, so I do that for my other turntables and showing the different um, attributes that I want to show, like the wireframe, AO, specular color, not color, flat shaded perhaps, um, and continue that uh, process. So once that process is finished, what we have to do then is um, export out our animation. So to do that, what we need to do is um, trim our timeline. So in this case, I'm trimming it down to here, which is fine. Probably be nice to fade to black at the end as well, so I'll just quickly do that. So there we go. Um, and yeah, credits would be good as well. So once I've trimmed it by clicking on this uh, slider up the top here, I can right click and go trim comp to work area and so now our whole composition is just our working space. With that it's time to export the animation and to do that we can go to composition add to Adobe Media Encoder Q and that will load up in a sec. And you just need to give it a little second. It will um, eventually come up. So once it's in here, what we want to do is just use a preset for our, our uh, compressions and frame rates and, and so forth. And the preset we want to use is uh, Vimeo 1080 HD, which is a H.264 codec at 24 frames a second. So with that, we'll press play.
and it will render out. It'll take a little bit of time to do so. So once it's finished rendering, we can right click on it and go reveal output file and, um, and move it to the desktop and, and so forth. So here's our final file and our final animation as well as our breakdowns and turntables.